Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Lars Schall and on behalf of Matterhorn Asset Management in Zurich, Switzerland, I welcome you to an interview that I conduct with the author of this book, The Gold Cartel, written by Dimitri Speck. I think one part of the gold story is the fact that gold is the antagonist of credit money. Could you tell us a little bit about this? Gold is a store of value, a liquid store of value um, that uh, is by nature limited in its quantity. And it has a long tradition as money. Yeah? That means uh, that the people know if they keep gold, yeah, they have a limited uh, store of value that cannot be um, inflated by governments or by the banking system. Uh, and has no risk to lose value through this. This is the first, first thing. And the second is uh, credit money, uh, which is in the banking system, has also always the risk of um, that the bank or the state went bankrupt and you lose, you, you lose money through this. These are the two advantages of, of gold compared to credit money or to credit in general. Yeah? And um, this is also historically why the people um, are storing their wealth in gold if they need liquid assets. Yeah, that's not only an issue since 1971, since there is no connection between money and gold anymore. We have it also historically that the people had the choice to bring their money to the banks and to earn interest rate, interest earnings, or to keep it in gold, which is safer because of these two things. That means gold has a kind of double phase. The first thing, gold insures you against uh, bank defaults. Yeah? And the second is gold gives you a gain if we have usually negative real interest rates. Yeah? That means if the inflation is higher than the interest that you earn on your banking account. Yeah? This is a double phase of gold. It's a protection against uh, bank bankrupts and it's a protection against inflation mm -hmm. yeah or put it more correct against negative real interest rates meaning not earning enough interest uh, compared to the inflation let us go back in time in 1971 the link between the US dollar and gold was cut there is no connection anymore no link however in your research you came to the result that there was already informal um, this development going on before 1971, connected to the so-called blessing letter. You are absolutely right. Most people um, see the, the closing of the gold window, as Nixon said, <laughs> in 1971, as the end of Bretton Woods and the end of the connection between the credit money and gold. Yeah. But uh, let's put it in a little bit more realistic how it was before. Yeah? Um, we had this connection between gold and um, credit mon and money and currency in, in Bretton Woods only within the central bank system. Yeah? Compared to the original gold standard, normal people could not go uh, to the central banks, bring their uh, dollars or pounds or whatever and say, I want to have gold uh, for it. Yeah? Uh, it. Only other central banks could do so. And the US had a, a running deficit already in the 60s, yeah, caused by the Vietnam War, for instance, caused by the troops which were in, in other countries. And on the other side, other countries like Japan or Germany in the 60s had the interest um, that the American troops stay in their country because uh, they feared that the Soviet Union would attack them. Yeah? So um, there was on the one side a running deficit of the US, foreign defense deficit, and on the other side there were uh, exporting countries like Germany or Japan who had the choice uh, to get dollars for uh, their exports or who had the choice to get gold. And the Japanese already starting in the early 60s, uh, mainly took uh, dollars and not gold. Yeah? And also the Germans uh, started early in the, in the early 60s and then more in the mid 60s, 
uh, to accept mainly dollars instead of gold for uh, their exports. And then the blessing letter did finally um, um, put it in a written form, which was not very common because mainly the central banks have gentlemen agreements. They simply do the things or they just say it. Yeah, they don't write it down. But in the blessing letter in, 1970, in 1967, uh, the German um, Bundesbank had blessing, the central bank Bundesbank, uh, confirmed that they would uh, not, that they would continue uh, to accept dollars instead of gold. Yeah, so finally at that time already the, the, um, the, the Bretton Woods was almost ended, only the French did continue to ask for gold. Yeah? And in 1967 already um, the US uh, government recognized the importance of, of this blessing letter yeah, because they said that if all central banks would act like the Germans, we would have a dollar standard. And so it would be a new currency system. Yeah, and uh, they could run deficit, def deficits endless. This is all, they, they did say it in 1967. Yeah? Mm. So in 71, it was only formally the end. This has step by step uh, this con Way away from gold to a dollar standard. Is the dollar standard characterized by asset price inflation? Continuously, not just now, but also in the past already? Um, the dollar standard, meaning that we have no um, connection to gold anymore, uh, was introduced because um, the US government wanted to run deficits. This is the reason. And of course, gold cannot um, limit uh, too much credit. There was, were also credit bubbles in, 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 in history where we had um, precious metal mon money, mainly silver or gold. Yeah? So it cannot limit uh, credit bubbles. Yeah? But uh, in, in a plain dollar standard, a plain uh, currency standard without boundary of gold, um, it's easier to create a real big mega bubble, as I call it, yeah? meaning that um, that normally a bubble like the Southie bubble in 1720s, yeah, they, it does rise and it bursts after some two, three, four years. But since the 70s, we have a bubble, uh, and always when when there seems to appear correction and uh, the bubble would burst. The central banks and the governments uh, came in and um, did deficit spending and did avoid a full burst of the bubble. Uh, the credit le level did increase and increase and so we are now really in a new situation where we have a worldwide credit bubble. Yeah? So um, one thing is very important to understand. Um, it was not an intellectual thought uh, to say, okay, gold is um, a Czech relict, or gold standard is something uh, which is not good working. It was the, the, the need to, or the, the idea, to run deficits uh, endlessly uh, that uh, gold was being uh, put away from the uh, currency standards. Yeah. Yeah. So that gold is um, demonetarized and it's not part of the international currency system. Is this a precondition for the creation of those bubbles and the big credit bubble that you see now? Yes, it's connected, yeah? Because gold is in the world and gold is known as store as value, yeah? Mm. And this gold must be deconnected from, from currencies, yeah? And also suppressed, yeah? That's, 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 that's another, it's the same thing. Yeah, like uh, the gold suppression since 1993, to allow the central banks and the government to create as much money as they want. Yeah, because only if the people stay in the credit systems, it can be inflated in, in this big amount as this is, it's being done since decades now. Mm -hmm. What do you see as the end game of this huge mega bubble that we are seeing? 
Um, let's put it this way. We must think in scenarios because we all don't know the future. Yeah? We are in a very high debt level yeah? worldwide. The traditional way out of this would be a deflation, meaning that simply the savings would disappear through bank bankrupts. Yeah? But since, yeah, since the uh, big um, deflation in the 1930s, uh, the governments usually uh, avoid these deflations in the big scales. And locally it happens like in Greece, but uh, in big, on a big level it does not happen anymore. So uh, they avoid this. And now there are different ways what can happen in the future. If we look in Japan, there the bubble burst in, the 90, in 1990. And since more than two decades, almost nothing happened. Yeah? Only the debts did increase even more. Yeah? So it may happen that for some years we see something like happened in Japan, meaning asset price deflation or but no consumer price, big consumer price changes. Yeah? I don't see this scenario, but it might happen. Yeah? Because already now, we have, for instance, the S&P on new highs. Yeah? Whereas in Japan, uh, after the 90s, all the asset prices did fall. Yeah? Another scenario is um, that uh, the savers lose their money, like in Great Britain after the Second World War. Yeah? This is also a scenario which is possible, meaning uh, there will be high taxes on savings, there will be negative real rates, some growth in economy, and through this, after maybe two or three decades, the level of credit is lower. Yeah? I'm also not very optimistic that this will successfully happen. Yeah? And the second fear is if this happens, it, it's a kind of socialism. Yeah, this is also something which should be considered because the influence of, of the state on, on the freedom uh, will, will be uh, quite high, so the freedom will be reduced. And in my opinion, the most likely situation is that the governments will try something like Japan, but better, yeah, and the central banks. They will, want, will try to avoid a Japanese scenarios, and on the same side, they will try to avoid the deflation and on the same side, they will try to in avoid an inflation. And in my opinion, they will fail with this, and suddenly an, an inflation will appear, meaning that the velocity of money will increase, that the saver will run out of the banking system step by step in, into real assets, and this will cause an inflation on, on, in the asset prices, but also on the consumer prices. In my opinion, this is the most likely scenario. Do you think that the role of gold in the international monetary system will rise in years to come, for example, through the push uh, by Eastern central banks, China, Russia? Yes, uh, central banks uh, have also an interest in their, um, in their savings and, of course, um, they have much, much less opportunities to invest like a private investor. They cannot invest in their own country. They cannot invest in any illiquid stuff. They can invest mainly in, in bonds and gold, and maybe in some big stocks or so. Yeah, that's all of what they can invest. And they have so much savings, for instance, the Chinese that you mentioned, but also in Arabian countries, or Japanese, uh, South Korea, for instance. So what can they do? Yeah, they must go into gold. Uh, so in my opinion, uh, the importance of gold will rise, not because there are some politicians or some economics who say uh, we need gold. I think these ideas will follow by the need of the market. And the, the market simply says we need stable money. Yeah? And also the central banks are saying this. Yeah? Generally, uh, the role of gold in the central banking system uh, is, is higher than the role of gold in, in the general economy because of what I told you, uh, they have less opportunities where they can store their, their uh, investments. And also because of another reason, because it's their role to, to keep the, the, the financial system running. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and co uh, to have a lot of gold in the, in the, in the central banks means also uh, that, that the state has shows that it's a stable country and they can always pay foreign bills and so on. This is also why the uh, US federal system, for instance, keeps gold. Yeah. Yeah. 
So in my opinion, gold will, uh, the importance of gold will rise in the future. In your book, you also took a look at the price suppression of silver. However, your results differ from those of the CFTC. Can you tell us a little bit about your reaction to the fact that the CFTC did not found proof of a manipulation of the silver market? I don't know uh, what the CFTC did uh, when it did this investigation, which means they had, which interest they had. Yeah, they are also part of, of the US government and maybe they, they um, did have the order um, not to uh, continue here. Yeah. It is clear that the price of silver is also being suppressed. Yeah. If you look um, at this intraday statistic, which I mentioned already for gold, you can see that in silver we also have at the fixing uh, uh, statistically proven that the price drops at the silver fixing. Uh, there's no doubt at all. If you look, for instance, at the price of, gold, uh, of silver rising until May 2011, when it did rise from 20 to almost 50, um, and then it did drop uh, back to almost 20, you can see, uh, was there some decrease in, in demand? No, the ETFs, for instance, have now stored more silver than they had before, yeah, as an example. If you see in the interest of the US government, whether they should allow the price of silver to rise, you can also see they have the same interest like in gold because uh, silver can also be a store of value and if it does not rise in price, uh, the interest of the private people to buy some silver as store of value is, is decreased, of course, less people will do so. Yeah, we know, for instance, um, from the 1980s, that the government did also uh, has this interest not to allow silver to rise in price. This is also a uh, historical precedent. What we also see, and I think this is for me the, the, the core uh, um, indication that silver is being suppressed and how it's being suppressed, is the situation of the rising of the price be before May 2011. Yeah? In this 40 months is before, this intraday pattern, which I mentioned, had disappeared. This is very interesting. It's the same story like in gold, because before 1993, yeah, if you make here the research in gold, in the PM fixing anomaly that the price statistically proven dropped there, did not exist. It did exist only after August 1993. And similar situation we have in silver. In the 40 months before, May 2011, there is no statistically uh, effect of this fixing issue. But in the 40 months in comparison after this, you can see again that the price of silver drops frequently at the fixing. Yeah? Mm. So it is quite obviously that um, the silver suppression uh, did somehow stop in, in this uh, 14 months before May 2011, and there was also a rumor, by the way, that uh, the trading um, office of JP Morgan has been closed in London, yeah? So maybe there is a connection. And after that, it came again. Uh, so this is, there are so many indications that silver is being suppressed. I just mentioned some. Okay, thank you very much for this interview. Ladies and gentlemen, this was the second interview that I have conducted with Dimitri Speck. And on behalf of Matawan Asset Management in Zurich, Switzerland, I say thank you for watching.